So today I'm going to be tying a Willy Gun Snelda. It's a, a small tube fly pattern that I've been using probably over the last five or six years and it's it's up there with some of the best if not the best patterns that I would use myself. I've had, I've had quite a number of fish on it over the years and just thought it was about time I shared the video on the YouTube channel. So in my vise I have my tube fly needle for mounting my tube flies on and the tube I'm going to be using is a Sean Stanton signature tube 10mm. It's a flangeless tube so we're going to be adding a cone head on at the end. Now I've been asked a few times about tube fly sort of systems or how you set up liners, tubes, again needles. There's a wide variety on the market and I suppose it can be a bit confusing. But these would kind of be my favourite go-to ones anyway. So I just take my tube, slide in my 1.8mm liner, which is, is fairly standard. You get quite a few different brands, but they all do much the same. Oh, just get that in the camera. Lighter, just to furl the end a bit. Slide your tube down onto it, tight. And then take, that's about three quarters of an inch of silicone tubing. And just slide that on till it's tight. So I also like to cut the liner tubing slightly longer than I need. It's always handy to have a bit more when you're coming to the end of a fly just in case. It's nothing worse than running out, running out of space when you're finishing off the fly. So you just slide that down onto the liner or onto your pen, sorry, nice and tight. Shouldn't really, shouldn't really move too much. And now for our thread, I'm going to be using some yellow Uni 80. So I just catch on, just catch on to your plastic liner and build up a base of thread just to help take the step out of it from your brass, brass tube down onto your liner. It just gives a nice smooth transition for bringing your body down. Take my scissors and trim off the excess. Get that out of the way. And then just work our thread back down, filling in those wee voids, recesses, just to come down to where the silicone meets. So for the tail, tail of the fly, I'm going to be using some some bucktail. Now I have here some pre-mixed yellow, orange, and black. It's, as far as the ratio goes, you're probably talking what 40, 40, 20 with 40% orange and yellow and then about 20 black but you could go whatever whatever combination you want it so just try and get the tips all lined up a bit anything that's coming out too far just try and get them somewhere near I'm gonna pop them into my hair stagger just to try and bring them a bit more in line they don't have to be perfect but see any broken tips in there try and pull them out too so that, that's reasonably good I'm happy with that so length of the fly you're looking probably longer than from where you start your silicone or start your brass to the silicone so one and a quarter one and a half times that length that's usually what I go for if you want to go a bit longer I'm sure it would Sure it would do much the same. So that's not too bad. Splayed out roughly over the top half. And then we'll take another bit for the bottom half. Same again, you know, line your tips up, drop it into your hair stagger. And it should just oh, has a wee broken couple of broken tips in there. Get them out. And same thing again, just set it onto the top, line up the length with a piece you've already tied in. And a few turns to bind it down. That's not too bad, you can see there we have a wee gap. I wouldn't worry too much about that. We'll We'll get that covered later on. So 
So I'm going to add a little bit of flash into this now. The flash I'm going to be using for this one is crinkle flash and pearl and venue. I like I like this one. I'd also be a fan of just a normal gold crystal flash. I find that's quite good too. I've also done a few sets of flies for people where they've, they've asked for the UV crystal flash on it too. That's that's not a bad bad variant. So just tied in both sides and then top and bottom. Did that pull it? No, it's alright. I thought maybe when it caught my fingers it pulled through a wee bit, but we're still pretty good for for length. Just straighten that up a little bit. There we go. Um, trim these two bits off and use the same length for the top and the bottom. This is where the rotary vise comes in really really handy. You can just turn it to whatever angle you want and see see the underside of it. There we go. So just trim these wee bits of flash back out of the way. Get rid of that waste. And I'll get a couple of jungle cock eyes. So I have a cape here where plenty of small stuff all Kind of the main salmon fly sizes, 12s, 14s, 8s, 10s are all picked out. And loads of the bigger ones at the bottom. We'll just pull off two, two matching feathers. And the oversized ones. And this was kind of why I started tying this fly. It was just, I had loads and loads of capes with all them big feathers that I never really use. Just the types of rivers I'm fishing. The patterns I'm using, it's all small jungle cock. I just thought it would be a good way of using some of them up. Kind of a waste just to throw them out, especially when you're buying good quality capes where there's no splits in the nails. So, just get our jungle cock added on each side. Take a wee I'll check that they're both the, the same length. Yeah, pretty good there. What's that like in the camera? It's one of the good things about making the videos, you know, you can see in the screen how the, the other side of the fly is. You don't really look at it much until, until you're finished the fly. So we'll trim off our jungle cock. Just the, the bad ends of that, or the tail ends. And now for our bucktail, we're just going to come in at an angle. Cut it. Same with this side. Just helps keep that nice taper when we're bringing our body down. Everything just helps keep everything that smooth. Yeah, and then we'll tie down all our waist. So you can see there the thread starting to slip a bit. That's because we haven't got smooth enough transition there so we'll just use our thread and build up build up a base of thread there nice and tight and that'll help when we bring everything back down. Now for the rib I'm going to be using some black UTC wire and we'll catch it in at the very tip again at the plastic liner and we'll bring it all the way back down with us just helping maintain that even body or smooth body so for the dubbing I'm going to be using some gold light bright we'll just get some of this dubbed onto the thread I try not to put too much on at once it's easier easier to add a bit more on if you need it than to, than to take it off. So we'll get that dubbed on nice and tight. It's usually pretty good stuff to work with. It takes a good bite to the thread. And then touch and turns, making sure there's no underbody showing through. 
just get a bit more added on. One of the reasons I used the, the yellow thread for this, I, oh, I just slipped a bit, so we'll take that back a couple of turns. Uh, I use the yellow yellow thread because it means if there is a gap or so in the underbody, or after a, a fish or so it's maybe been ripped a bit, it's just not as easy to see. You know, it helps. You, you kind of get away with a bit more. So, a bit more dubbing, and we'll bring that on up. If you're not happy with your taper, or you find you've missed a bit, you can go back over it. That's not too bad there. I think that looks alright in the camera as well. And now we'll bring a rib up. So, open, even turns. Because we're using the wire in this, you can you can really pull it to bite down under the fly. You know, it's it really does help the strength of the the fly. You know, whereas if it was oval or something, you'd probably have it ripped. It just you just can't put the same pressure on it. But the the wire the wire is it's great. You can you can put an awful lot of pressure down onto it, and and it helps hold everything nice and tight. So we'll just worry that tip off. Now for my haggles, I have a couple of these hen saddles which have died recently. These are really good for the job, nice webby fibres, really really fine stalks. So fine in fact that when you're stripping the, the flue off you do need to go quite careful, it's easy to break it. So we'll just open up the, open up the tap. Trim off, get rid of that bit. Tie it down in. Just a few turns of thread. Come in now with our hackle pliers. Um, nice and gentle, like I say. The tips are quite fine, so you need to be need to be gentle with them. Not too much pressure, or you'll you'll snap them. And the fibers are the feathers quite webby, so two turns is usually usually more than enough. And then over the top with our thread, three or four turns just to hold it in place. Trim off the excess, and then we'll bind down over the top. This will just help help strengthen everything up again because you're tying over over the haggle stock and basically just the same again with our orange trim off her or pull off her flue open up the tip alright so like I said earlier on in the video this is probably in my most successful pattern over the last five years or so. There was a stage where I probably had more fish on this than pretty much any other or all of my other flies. I think just the colour combination really, you know, it's it's everything a salmon fly needs. I don't think you could go to too many rivers anywhere in the world for salmon fishing where black, orange and yellow wouldn't work. You know, you have your cascades, your willy guns, things like that, park shrimps, all the same colour combinations and very good reputations for, for catching salmon. We'll just get these fibres pulled back a bit. Few turns of thread. There's one just sticking forward. If I can get that, there we go. I see a few bits of the gold dubbing poking through. I just just pull them off. If if there's the odd wee straggle sticking through, I don't actually mind that. I think it's I think it can be quite nice. So the whip finisher I use is quite small. You're not really able to. You don't really have enough room to whip finish tubes, so generally I just whip finish them by hand. 
half a dozen or so turns and then come in at the end just with a hook of the whip finisher to keep the tension on my thread. Trim off our excess. Now to add a cone. Again, colour a cone, it's much up to yourself. I've used I've used all different ones. I, I'd be quite a fan of the fluorescent cones, orange, chartreuse, pinks, things like that. And then again, just because our body in this is gold, a gold cone can can set it off quite well. So first of all, put your cone on just to make sure that it's it would sit right. Sometimes there's a big recess in the back of the cone and when you push it on it'll compress the feather and it doesn't really look that good. So that one's not too bad. It sits nice. It doesn't really impact the, the feather at all. We'll just pull it back out of the way. That'll dull the blob of super glue. Slide our cone back on. Give it a twist to spread the glue and then just hold it in place for probably seven to ten seconds. So that's it basically, basically complete. All we have to do now is I'll just pull this off the tube. Now take my old scissors, trim off our plastic liner, just a millimeter, two millimeters longer than than the cone. Yep, just making sure we're all still in the camera. And then come in with your lighter, just to furl the end of it. Just hold the lighter on it till it melts right back over the tube and then use the end of your needle just to open up the hole. And there we have the Willy Gun Snelda which would be my personal favourite salmon fly. I've used it quite a lot over the years and it has definitely looked after me. So, thanks for watching. Hope you've enjoyed the video. If you are any salmon fishing, tie and flies, definitely give that one a go. So, hopefully see you next time.